In this video, I'll show you how to perform the concavity test and second derivative test for a function. This is part two of the series. In part one of this series, we use the first derivative to tell us if a function is increasing or decreasing. But how do we learn more about the shape? It turns out that if the graph of f lies above all of its tangents on an interval i, then it is called concave upwards on i. And if the graph f lies below all of its tangents on i, it is called concave downwards on i. The definition is stated right here. So what we're going to do with the function that we started with in part one is we'll find the second derivative, set it equal to zero, and see what happens before and after those critical values are found. Let me demonstrate what I mean. Let's start off by finding the first and then the second derivative. The first derivative will look like this. 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. The second derivative will look like this. Now, in case you're confused as to how I got these values, I use the power rule. So I'll just state that right here. Once again, I'll use the power rule for all three terms. This one becomes 12x, this one becomes minus 6, and this one disappears. So the next thing I'll do is set this equal to 0. 12x minus 6 is equal to 0. And here I'll find some critical points. I'll bring this 6 over, giving us positive 6, 12x, and therefore x is equal to half. So what we're going to do next is find out what happens before half is reached and after half is reached. So for example, x is less than half and x is greater than half. So when x is less than half, and let's substitute any arbitrary value for x that's less than half, let's say 0. So 12 times 0 minus 6, we get negative 6, so we get minus. And since it's minus, according to this test, this part will be concave down. In other words, it will be concave down from negative infinity to half. We're going to perform the same test for when x is greater than half. And when x is greater than half, let's pick the number 1, for example. 12 times 1 minus 6 gives us a positive value. It gives us positive 6. So therefore, when x is greater than half, it is concave up. And that's it. We performed this concavity test. Let's move on to the next test. Now, information about the second derivative can also help us classify local maximum and minimums. And here we turn to the second derivative test. So let's continue with question two. Find where the function has local maximums and minimums. So what we'll do is find out the c values. And the way we find out the c values, and we've already done this in part one of the video, is you find the first derivative, set it equal to zero, and find your x's. And we learned that our x's from that first part were x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to positive 2. And you can check part 1 to see how I derived these. And above, we learned that the second derivative was equal to 12x minus 6. So f double prime is equal to 12x minus 6. And what we're going to do is evaluate this function at these two points. So let's do that f double prime at negative 1 gives us 12 times negative 1, that's negative 12, minus 6 is equal to negative 18. And similarly, f double prime at 2 is 12 times 2, which is 24, minus 6 is equal to positive 18. So what does the second derivative tell us? This number right here is less than 0, and this one is greater than 0. Therefore, and I'll write the conclusions for both right here. Therefore, there is a local 
maximum at x is equal to negative 1 and and a local min at x is equal to 2. So in part 3 of this video, we'll collectively use all the information we found in part 1 and part 2 to actually sketch this function. In other words, we'll be using strictly calculus and how we can visualize what a function would look like on a graph. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.